Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Cook and Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We're here. It's pre-weighing. You haven't got to make weight, but uh, the formalities continue. So how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm all good, man. I'm fueled up, unlike uh, probably most of our fighters, so I'm feeling good. Yeah, obviously, it's a bit of a homecoming for you. First matchroom show in over five years, I think it is, and you're going to be on it, on it, headlined by Galal. But good to be back, not far for you to come. Yeah, like you say, I'm, I'm local, you know, I'm just at home here, so, you know, just got to go around the corner, really. It's a lot better than travelling all over the country and all over the place, definitely. Talk to me about your opponent, uh, Chris Thompson. He's come in it, yesterday at the press conference. He spoke really well, and I think it'll be a good test for you on Saturday night. Yeah, something different. You know, it's a southpaw, which is always something different for you to um, go up against. But I'm ready. I'm prepared. You know, the the opponent is, you know, he's going to come to win. You know, he's got a big opportunity for him on a, on a big show. So he wants to impress. But you know, every fight for me is like life or death, as far as I'm concerned. So it's all about what I can do. For you, is it about making a statement now? Because we see the names, the Fraser Clarks, the David Adelaide's, the Fabio Wardleys, but it's your job now to try and make your name relevant with those. Yeah, it's all about making statements, of yeah. course. Boxing ability and skill-wise, everyone knows in the ring. You know, I've got no problems with um, those sort of guys, you know, at the, the level I'm at. But yeah, like you say, it's, it's, it's making statements and, you know, just, just pushing my name and, and making sure people know that I'm, I'm, I'm in business. Do you think you are being overlooked when it comes to that kind of segment of British heavyweights? Not not by the fighters. Maybe, maybe by, like, you know, um, maybe it's people on social media. But by, those guys know that if they get in the ring with me, it's going to be a difficult night. They, they know that themselves, you know, because they know what I'm about. But um, maybe outside promoters and whatnot, you know, I don't know. But I think those other guys, they know what I'm about. I'll be honest, I'm sure he won't mind me saying, but Fraser Clark says that you'd probably be his toughest test. Um, do you think you are kind of being looked at as a bit of a bogeyman at the minute? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I've known Fraser for years, we've sparred for years, so, you know, we know what each other's about. And he knows if he fights me, it's a, it's a very, very hard fight for him. Um, and, and so did the other guys, so... All it comes down to is just getting in the ring, you know, and, and getting it all on because at the end of the day, that's what people want to see. Were you disappointed when it went to David Adelaide because it started off with Fraser Clark? Many people saw that as controversial, see, seeming how little fights he's had in the professional game. Were you disappointed that your name weren't thrown out there? Yeah, bo both times, you know, when Fraser got ordered and, and Adelaide, you know, I wanted myself to be the one to, to step straight in there, but... You know, whatever happens behind the scenes, you know, promoters and whatnot, whoever's got in there first to, to put their claim in, that's just how it works. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be fighting those guys and whoever wins out of them, I'd like the winner. I think you also said yesterday that you would have thrown your name in there for AJ when uh, Dillian come back with his adverse findings. For you, is it a case of just taking these opportunities when you can find them? Definitely. We're not we're not shying away from any fight. I, I know I'm ready to go at any level. You know I could have a British title fight tomorrow, and I believe I'd be British champion if, if that was the case. So I'm not going to be looking past anyone, but I'm not going to be avoiding anyone either. And rightly so, you couldn't be uh, obviously looking past Chris Thompson on Saturday night. Have you seen much of him? And what what is he going to bring? Obviously, we know he's southpaw. I've, I've had a little look on YouTube, what I can find. Obviously, most of his fights have been in South Africa, so there's only a few bits and bobs. But he's a strong, he looks like quite strong, in shape kind of guy. So we've looked at a few technical things. I've been sparring Southpaws. I was sparring Dempsey McKean the other week before he fought Hergovic. And he's a you know, taller, six foot seven, very tricky and technical Southpaw. So I was having good sparring with him, and I'm, I'm well prepared for this fight. We know. A managerial stable mate of yours, Joe Joyce. He struggled with us uh, with a southpaw, and hopefully he will be ret in the return, get that done. But for you, do you think the southpaw thing won't really make a difference on Saturday? No, it won't make a difference. He's, he's there for me, and it's just another body in the ring. I've fought many southpaws as an amateur and beat top quality southpaws. It's just 
something that maybe might a couple of rounds just take my time, see how he reacts, and then start start to let my hands go. Um, the stance isn't really a major factor. It's really how good you are, mm. and um, I don't think this guy's quite on my level. Hopefully, all being well, you do get that win tomorrow, and I'm sure I will speak to you after the fight. There isn't really anywhere else you can go other those other than those domestic names that we spoke about previously. So, how do you get those fights? Just put my name in the mix, get my managers to keep pushing my claim and pushing it with the board and however the official channels work for us to make sure that we're getting those fights. I think they're going to happen. They've, they've got to happen because people aren't going to just stand by and, and say, why aren't you fighting this and that? We're putting offers out or we're, we're, we're calling for fights. So it's just a matter of just putting it to my management and such to, to get those fights done. Last one, because I know we've got to get off to the weigh-in. What can people expect from Soul Dakers tomorrow night live on the zone? Yeah. Another big performance, another win and I'm looking for a stoppage in this one again. Just keep that, that knockout ratio going now. I'm, I've got a good one in my last fight, two two rounds done. Same again. You know, I'm developing into the pros now. My punch power is starting to show with the people that are coming to box and win. So another knockout. So thank you very much for being to IFL TV. Best of luck tomorrow night, mate. Nice one, I appreciate it. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Nice thank you. you. Is that right, yeah? Yeah, Lovely. For the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up.